Let's go. We're here in Mexico. We are in the Dominican Republic. So I'm gonna tell you a couple different tips that have helped me over the years. <laughs> wow! Unbelievable! Jacob Wheeler makes history! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel today. I'm going to dive into something that, um, you know, I, I've got a lot of people throughout my career that um, have asked me, you know, do something or, or tell tell me, you know, help, tell me when you knew when you were going to be a professional bass fisher. Was there a moment, um, you know, can what can you say to help help those high school, college anglers that are trying to be, professional anglers uh to get to that point what is there some advice and, and some of those things so i i figured i would take a step back and, and, and talk about a little bit on when i sort of knew i was gonna be a pro angler and professional angler um i i just had a piece that came out um recently with realtree and realtree outdoors they just did one a, a new be real series and sort of like talking about being yourself and and just just doing what you love. Um, and, and that sort of encompassed a lot of that, you know, in, in, a, in a short film, if you guys haven't seen that, make sure to hop on their page and check it out. Cause it is pretty cool. Um, but <clears throat> with that being said, I, I go back and, and it's sort of as a, you know, I, I started to think about it. And I'm like, you know, when did I know, um, when did I know that I was going to be a pro angler? I got it. And it, and it, it didn't happen until it happened. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I believe that the biggest key was, it wasn't when did I know, it was when did I believe I was going to be a professional bass angler. I think that's the biggest point that I had as I started to real, I think about this this video topic and started to think about what what that meant was when did I believe personally, like in my heart, that I was going to be a, a professional angler. Um, and so, and, I, and I've said this several times, you know, but going back early in my career or even going earlier back before I, I – I knew anything about tournament bass fishing. I just, you know, when I caught my first fish, like so many out there, um, or my first few fish, there was something that triggered in me that I, I knew like, this is, this is unbelievable. This is awesome. You know, I, I played a little bit of basketball growing up, a little tennis. Um, but in my, I mean, you know, seven, eight, nine years old, six, six, seven, eight, or nine years old, reeling in these fish, um, there was something that that passion for just fishing, not even competing. Um, I thought it was so cool um, going out there with my dad, going with my uncle. Um, and, and, and this is something that I bring up a lot that second career, second grade career day, I was a pro bass angler. So I guess what would that be, Brody? Second grade would be um, you would be like eight, nine, eight, nine. So you'd be like 10, 12. Seven. Hold up. I'm going to Google this thing. So, that's why I said seven or eight. I thought it was seven or eight. Okay. So seven or eight years old, I'm already sitting there saying, hey, listen, this is what I'm going to do. So that's the earliest that, like, that's when I believe. Like, I truly believed at seven years old that I was going to be, believed that I was going to be a pro bass fishing, you know, pro bass fisherman. It just, it, it was what it was. It's crazy to think back that far and think that. And I, and I, the thing is, at seven, you know, obviously, you're you don't you know a lot of a lot of kids at that age are like, hey, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be an astronaut. At, you know, you, not everybody knows who they're going to be at seven, let alone at 21 after college or 22 after college or before you know graduating high school. Um, and I, and I think it's sort of a, a deal that when you think about the you know. When did you know? When you believe? That's that's it sort of goes into it all. Is 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 like in life? I feel like it's all about confidence and how do you see life? I, I I'm a very big, um, I'm very big in my life. I try to be super positive with adversity, with things that are negative. I try to have a positive spin on them. It's always a cup half full kind of deal for me. Always has been. Always I feel like always will be. Um, and I think that that allows for you to have a little bit of uh, confidence um, on top of it. Like you're, I, I would say almost I had a little bit of, I had so much confidence that I never believed I wasn't going to be a pro bass angler. I didn't realize 
all the things that had to happen in my in my life to where it would all work out. You know, it didn't grow up in a. I, I personally did not grow up in a family that had, um, you know, the means to provide a bass boat with all the nice stuff on there. Um, I didn't, you know, my uncle did have a really nice bass boat and I was able to fish with him, um, a little bit, but I, I, I learned a lot growing up fishing with other people and I owe a lot of what I know, um, and what I, I started the passion that I have, um, at that at young age to so many people that took me under their wing. I think that's a really big, important reason for so many people out there, whether you're, you know, have a kid down the street um, that's never been fishing is taking some, these kids fishing and taking younger kids fishing to show them what this sport has to offer. Even if they just want to go out there and just, you know, the first to catch their first fish. I mean, I think there's something to that. So I owe a lot to these, these young kids or these young, these, these men um, that actually took me fishing um, that, that I learned so much through that. I mean, um, and, and sort of, I know I'm going through this and sort of trying, I don't want to take it, take up the whole time, but I remember a time, this was a, you know, I was probably 14 years old and I was, I was fishing a little tournament on the White River in Broad Ripple. I would ride my bike there um, every day after school. And I would ride there on Wednesday, every Wednesday after school during the summer, you know, during the fall and springtime they would have these tournaments Wednesday night tournaments a dog fight or week night or whatever you want to call them and I would always go there with it was twenty dollars to put your entry fee in and I was all I was I would go to this place about a mile and a half with my five rods on my bike and my tackle bag on my back and I would try to jump in um with one of the anglers that was there that was fishing by themselves potentially said, Hey, I'll pay half entry for here's ten dollars, you know. And I met some of the most uh influential people in my life at that boat ramp that uh I don't know if I didn't go, if my parents didn't let me go um and do that if I if I'd be in the position I am right now. It's sort of crazy to think about that and I haven't thought that about that, but I would go there with my ten dollars, and there were some week nights that some tournament nights that I would not get to go fishing. I wouldn't be with there wasn't somebody that had didn't have a partner or didn't maybe want to take a kid. I mean, at fourteen years old or fifteen years old, you're probably like, dude, I don't know if I want to take this kid. I understand it, I get it. I was probably even thirteen at that point in time, some point in time. Um, but the I remember vividly two individuals, Brian Johnson and Greg Morehouse. They said, hey, man. And, and I, it was so funny because Greg saw me out there. He see me every day, it's every turn of every week and every Wednesday. I'd be there with my tackle bag and my handful of rods. He said, "Man, I ain't gonna partner next week. You you come with me. You come fish with me." And that was right along when the vibrating jig and the chatterbait craze just started, um, right around that time. And um, I I remember going out there. He's like, yeah, and I and I jump in his boat. He's like, you get up on that troll motor. I don't like that troll motor. You get up on that troll motor on that troll motor. And it was like, it was that it, when the, these fish had never seen a chatterbait, <laughs> and it was pretty unbelievable. You wind that chatterbait around, and it was like every cast. I caught them all over the place. We won the tournament that night. Um, and he goes, and he and he looked at me, and, he, and Greg's. If anybody knows Greg Morehouse and. They call him Dad. They call him Lester. There's a lot of nicknames for him. He is, um, you could read him like a book. He's hes not holding anything back. hes He tells you how it is, and he just tells me at the end of the night, he goes, I don't give a dang what anybody says, but you're hired. You come you come fish with me anytime. And so that was sort of the start of, that was my term, one of my tournament partners right there. Um, and another one was was Brian Johnson, and he, um, he did a very, very similar story said, hey, be here next week. I'm, I'm going to go fishing with you. And we won our first tournament together as well. So he showed me a little bit of bu- about a buzz bait. And that buzz bait, to this day, um, is a bait that I I still love so much and I feel like um, I've caught won so much money on. Um, and that's why I sort of started that whole accent fishing. Um, I started you know, having a signature series buzz bait with them because I wanted a buzz bait that I, I would throw. We used to make them on ourselves. And I wanted one that was going to do what I needed it to do. So anyway, so without those people um, in my life, I would have probably never been in the position that I am. Um, I feel pretty confident about that. But there was a moment that that 
that are probably around 17. And this is something that I, I really want to challenge some of the anglers out there and some of the people that are trying to, to get to the next point. I, I won a lot of tournaments with team tournaments with Brian Johnson and, and Greg Morehouse, but I had not won a tournament by myself. And, and there's, and that's something that I, I feel like was the turning point in my career or in, in my quest to be a pro angler was, was this, it was a Wednesday nighter again, white river, um, broad ripple, Indiana, like not a place you're thinking, Hey, you're going to fish a dang Wednesday night tournament at, um, I jump in my, we had a boat at that point in time, we had an old fishing ski pro craft. Uh, the boat itself was, was, was pretty messed up. The fiberglass, we tore a hole in the side and we patched it up with some, with some, uh, we just did it ourselves just to try to make it where it wouldn't, it would stop leaking. Um, you know, troll motor wasn't obviously the best, but it got me by. And I remember going out there and fishing the tournament by myself. And I want to say, I guess I'm pretty sure I was 17 or 18 years old. Um, running the boat, nobody's there except me and making the decisions. And I was already doing that with Greg, even with BJ, I was Brian, but there's something different about going out there by yourself and forcing yourself to make every decision. You don't have anybody to talk to and say, Hey, what do you think about this? And bounce ideas off of, it was just you against the fish. It was you against the other people out there in the fish that were in that body of water. And I end up catching a few. I was actually flipping a tube, and I, I caught several nice fish on some wood, um, and came in and won the tournament. And you know, even though it was a ten boat Wednesday night tournament or eight boat Wednesday night tournament, to me that confidence that I I received from that night gave me the confidence that I felt like I I could do it all. Like I, there was no question in my mind that I could, oh, I can win a, a local tournament. I can win a, you know, state tournament. I can win. That was, I feel like the turning point. I feel like, and I, I want to say I was 17 or 18 years old. That was the point, you know, and I'd won several, you know, state championships for junior fishing, which would be high school fishing. I've won several tournaments with people in the boat. But doing it all on my own, be running the boat, driving the boat, fishing, pulling, you know, making the decisions without having somebody there, that was the key turning point in giving me the confidence that make me feel like I could do it all. And that and it and it's something that I I hadn't really thought of. I thought about it a little bit, but I I, I felt like really thinking about it before this video is that was it now going further into the career in my career um or going further on trying to to get to that point i fished the buckeye bfls um and there's a lot of stories around that i could go on for hours on that but i'm not going to go into it i will fish the buckeye bfls and i qualified for the bfl regional on kentucky lake um used my uncle's boat um, in that event, like for me, the BFL trail was it, it and still is the single best opportunity for a weekend angler to advance to professional bass fishing. If you are good enough and you are, have the opportunity, um, to, and have the skill set, you have the opportunity to get to professional bass fishing through that trail, um, which is which is crazy because without it, I I know I, again I know I would not be where I'm sitting right now, and it's crazy to think of it, but it's true. Um, without those BFL tournaments, I would not have qualified for a BFL regional. I wouldn't be pushed to fish harder, to learn new techniques, uh, to compete in fish different parts of the country. Um, and so I qualified through the BFL regional uh, to make the top six to go fish um, Cross Lake in the BFL American for $100,000. So I'm, I'm 19 when I qualify, 20 years old, and I go to this All-American, and I remember looking at Cross Lake. I spent several days down there. I looked at the lake um, I, I, I and, and tried to – 
to I felt like this is my shot. This was my one shot in professional bass fishing to get to that point. This is still an amateur world, basically an amateur um, championship. You know, it's an amateur national championship. It's the nation. Most of everybody, uh, at least at least out east anyway, um, half of the nation. Um, and that was my, that's my shot at it. Like that was where I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, this is it. Like, that's what it is. Like I, I, if I win this hundred thousand dollars, I have a chance to fish the Forestwood cup, which is now the title event. I'm with major Lake fishing. And I, if I win that, I'm, you know, dude, I, I can, I can do this thing. And, and again, it, the confidence, I, it was almost, I was naive, but I never thought I wasn't. And I, and I remember, I never thought I wasn't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I, again, I think it was the positive attitude I've always had. Um, and yes, you're going to have doubters. And I also think it was the people that I had supporting me that never gave me a reason to doubt it. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's so important as well. So, you know, parents that are watching, I never, my mom and dad really never gave me that reason to be like, well, you sure, son? You got to be, you know. And I thought of some of it, but it, overall, I never doubted that it was going to happen. I just felt like it was meant to be. And so I go to Cross Lake, day one of the tournament, I win, uh, or I'm I'm leading the tournament by like seven or eight pounds. And uh, it was it was insane. You know, go on to win the BFL American $100,000 in, in, in the rest of history, going on to fish the FLW Tour and, 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 and all that. Um, in fishing professionally. So that winning the all American was the single most important tournament in my career. Uh, but second was probably that Wednesday nighter <laughs> As crazy as it sounds. It probably was, it was the Wednesday nighter on the white river, the confidence. Um, and obviously there's a lot of people that, like I said, there's a lot of people that made this all work. Um, looking back, it, there were so many people that I, I met throughout my career and throughout the journey to get to that point that, I mean, I, I know I'm not naming everybody. I, I, I could go on. Like I said, I can go on. But that Wednesday night tournament was probably the second most important tournament is the confidence that I needed at that age to believe in myself. And that's probably the biggest thing that I and piece of advice I can give someone. I'm not going to tell you guys. You guys watch some of the videos, some of the high school, some of the college anglers that are on here right now, some of the guys that are that are aspiring pros that are fishing Toyota series or opens or whatever. It's the confidence that you can't be taught. It's something that you can't teach. You can learn this the best technique. You can learn um, when you have doubt in yourself. I think that 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 really can hurt an angler. There's a lot of questions and doubt can can hurt you negativity can hurt you positive attitude and having that confidence in yourself is something that you have to have something to go right you have to have something I look at like some of the greats that I've been around um and they always they're always oozing with confidence and you could just tell like they just have that and I think it takes that time 100% when you win everything like Jordan Lee or Odd or Kevin um, or Rick Klein, you're going to have that confidence because you know you, you are a bad dude and you're like, man, I am one of the, you know, if you feel that. But even before that, you know, that's harder to do when you're, it's harder not to have doubt. It's harder. So confidence is probably the number one key to bass fishing. Having confidence in what you're doing um, is is probably the biggest thing. I, like I said, I could talk about all these techniques, talk about what you're missing, Um I think we can go even further into depth um, talking about trying to learn MBU, learn your own particular techniques or particular way of fishing and figuring out what you like to do because that's also going to give you even more confidence when you're fishing those techniques that you have confidence in. Um, but then you also have to realize you have to, sometimes you have to make adjustments on the fly in the tournament and throw techniques that you don't like to throw to to be able to perform and, and, and get out of there with a good finish or, um, and so on and so forth. So that is my story. Um, those are the moments that, that really an overview of it all, but that's some, a story that I haven't really talked about a ton throughout on the channel. Um, and, and I wanted to shoot this video for so many out there 
that are aspiring professional anglers or just people that are out here looking for an understanding of a success in life. I feel like this is something that really um, people can relate to in life in general. Like having confidence in yourself is is something that's not easy to do. Um, but and, it, and it's something that it takes a special moment. Like, hey, it's something that's small to most, but it's as big to me as that Wednesday night tournament um, that made a huge impact in my life um, that ultimately allowed me to, to pursue my dream and, and never look back. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I, I'm always just wanting to be straight up with you guys and give you guys an opportunity, a little bit more of an understanding of my life. And maybe if you can learn from some of my mistakes or some of the uh, things that I've learned along the way, um, and that helps you in your, your adventures and your endeavors. Uh, I did my job. So thank you guys so much for following along as always subscribe to the channel. Um, if you enjoy this content, this is something a little bit different that you guys have not probably seen. I'm diving into it, but, uh, something that I wanted to do for several of you, um, that are trying to compete, um, in trying to get to that point, uh, whatever your goals are, good luck. Um, and we will see you guys on the next one.